Yeah, yeah I pressed it. Hello everyone, welcome back to LTF1. Um, Do today... you remember when you slapped that primary school girl? No, I don't. Shut up. Okay. We're cutting this out of the video. No, we are. It's a weird thing to say. Why would you say that? <laughs> I don't like it. Anyway, hello everyone, welcome back to LTF1. Today we're going to be talking about Series 4 of Drive to Survive. Now, bear in mind, I've only watched a couple of episodes, but you don't really need to watch any more than that. How many episodes have you watched? I've watched three. I've done better than you. I had a yeah. night to watch them. Did you, how many did you watch? Like eight. Eight? Yes. I'm trying not to binge it. Either way, um, yeah, new series, same as ever. you got Danny Ricardo, Christian Horner, Steiner, and that's it. That's your lot for the series. With a bit of Toto Wolf thrown in. Right, right. Toto Wolf. George Russell's thrown in there a fair bit this time. Yeah. As you get to the end of it, and then there's quite a bit of Ocon as well. Yeah. But they're decent episodes. There's... there's like really focused ones are yeah. decent. It's, I've seen a lot of people complaining because I was thinking the same thing. This is why I made this video. Is because, do you not think the format of it's just getting a bit tiring now? It's the same, it's Will Buxton. Yeah. When you get into an F1 car, you drive an F1 car. When you start a race, the race starts. As in, it was okay, the, the, the first, I think if you go back and watch the first series, the first yeah. season, it was good. Yeah. They dropped off from season two. Yeah, because me, um, yeah, because my mum's been getting into F1 recently, so I watched it with her. And the first series, fine. I understand if you want to explain the rules of F1, you want to explain how qualifying works. But it's like every episode has a bit of filler. Will Buxton just talking about qualifying det determines a grid for a Sunday. It doesn't need to be said every episode. Yeah, but at the same time, we're F1 fans. We have a fucking YouTube channel. Like, it doesn't need to be said for us. The series <laughs> isn't for us. I, a I lot know, of a lot of like people outside of the, the fan base that watch it that I've known and spoken to are loving it. Yeah, but what my point is is, if you're gonna watch Drive to Survive, you're not gonna just watch Series Four isolated. You're gonna go in for one, two, three, and four because that's how people watch TV shows. Yeah. So what my point is, after Series One or maybe even two. There's some things that just don't need explaining anymore for the audience. I think the whole... You're right then. Just a distracted. Just a bit distracted. Uh, just buffer. I think the whole um, 10 episode run thing is not working either. It's like they're not getting enough of the season in and they're also getting too much. To fill the 10 episodes, yeah. they're focusing on shit that we don't really care about, but then because they've only got 10 episodes, they're also missing out a lot of stuff that would be cared about. Yeah, it's like for the first episode, I assumed that we'd be straight into it, talking about Bahrain last year. I like pre-season. Yeah. I like pre-season episodes, I can't lie. But what I'm saying is, is fine, include a bit of testing, include a bit of pre-season, some of the drama before the season Like this starts. year's pre-season will be yeah. great. But what I'm saying is, like, there was a whole... It must have been about half an hour just reintroducing the same four characters over and over again. And fair enough, introduce Yuki Sonoda, uh, Mazepin, you know, new, and Mick Schumacher. But they they did the intro once when I watched it. And then they had uh, the credit scene, the title sequence. And then they showed the intro basically looped over a second time. And it took. You look a bit confused. No, I'm not. Just <laughs> yeah, but it, I'm not used to you just listening to me. Oh. But it took about 20, 25 minutes for the actual episode for them to talk about F1 or the new season at all. Yeah, no. I'm not enjoying it. I won't lie and say that I'm enjoying it. But yeah. right now I'm just watching it because I feel like I have to watch it. Well, you told me I had to watch it. Yeah, I told you you had to watch um, it so he could make a rant about it. <laughs> uh, so he could make a rant about yeah. it. As you can see, I'm just sat here. Uh, yeah, and on the same topic of Christian Horner, his wife, Jerry Horner... What are you about to say about Christian Horner's wife? I'm saying... You're a pervert, you should. I'm saying... Marsh Absolutely pervert. I'm Things <laughs> you were saying before we started rolling I'm about Christian Horner's wife, <laughs> disgusting. He was standing in his house, his mother's upstairs and he's saying these things. It's, it's fucked up. I don't, know, I don't know what... Anyway, I was going to say, I don't know why in episodes one and two, she's got more screen time than Sergio Perez. Uh, yeah, Sergio Perez has zero screen time throughout the entire series. Does he not get any in the... No. He does, like when they're walking through the paddock and he's walking in the back. <laughs> he gets a screen time there. 
but yeah, aside from that, Christian Horner's family get more screen time than yeah, they do. most F1 drivers. They do. Susie Wolf stars quite a bit in this one as well, but she's actually contributing because she's still a team principal. Yeah, Might not be a she, problem, she's but... involved in the world of racing. Yeah. She, correct me if I'm wrong, she's driven before as well. I um, think she has, yeah. In some series. But at least she has some sort of links to the world of F1. It's like, we have to hear about Christian Horner, his family, and, you know... Yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I feel like it should be a bit more... Have you watched the Kanye documentary? Not yet, I've been meaning to. It's a lot less produced than other documentaries. Yeah. It's mostly just raw footage. Yeah. And I feel like that could be a good way to go for F1. Like, you know how we used to get the cooldown room? Yeah. If it was just an hour of cool down room footage <laughs> yeah. i'd be happy with that but i don't think it brought people into the sport because yeah uh, like I'm, I'm not saying they pull out all elements of drama but some of them uh i haven't got to the episode yet but i've seen a lot of people saying that they talk about the monza sprint race and they present it as verstappen won when it was really bottas uh they don't show the end of the sprint race yeah from it's... what i remember pierre gasly crashes and then it's cut to sunday yeah. It's it's a little bit of Hamilton not being able to get past Lando and then it's Sunday. Sprint races is something they did a terrible job of. Yeah. It, it they did a terrible job. It was Yeah, because I, I was expecting at the start of the season on episode one, if they're gonna introduce the season they talk All the about changes yeah, made, yeah. about uh sprint races and uh yeah, but they didn't. Yeah. They didn't do a great job. No. But it is what it is. Yeah. Um what can we do about it. So what would your solution be to fix up to fix and to sort out essentially um just try try, to just try a new style of documentary i don't know yeah um i think like you said before do you know or yeah right now as i understand it there's one crew that goes to each team for each weekend they kind of yeah. have to plan that out in advance really it needs to be it needs to be like an all or nothing type of thing where yeah. they're always there in all the garages at all times but i don't know how you pull that off with 10 no. teams and 20 drivers yeah. you need a lot of people to do that but netflix surely they have the budget to do that uh, yeah i guess yeah, they should do and it's wildly popular series yeah. it's, it's so but I, yeah. I think for me it's like was it uh yeah when it was uh ocon and verstappen when uh there was an incident in brazil, brazil yeah. they showed some of the so they framed Ocon, and I'm quoting, when yeah. he came into the sport, he quickly got, got the reputation of a hothead. I've been watching since then. I don't remember him having the reputation of a hothead. Yeah, he used to clash with Perez. Yeah. But as far as I can remember, what everyone thought at the time was, it's the team's fault. And it, Perez shared the blame too, because yeah. of bad like team management and yeah. stuff like that. And they, they really did. I do like Ocon. And I like Sergio Perez too, but they really did push the good guy, bad guy narrative with that rivalry. Yeah, and for me, it was the other way around. Yeah. And we're way off topic, but <laughs> uh, like Singapore, you remember that crash? That was yeah. 100% Perez. Yeah. Ocon came out after so composed and I don't know, everyone's just remembered it differently. Yeah, I don't know. But back to the topic, like I was saying, they showed some of the background scenes after the incident with Verstappen and Ocon. I thought, if they do that more now, do you know how on YouTube they used to have the driver briefings? Oh, I love the driver briefings. They used to be really entertaining to watch. Yeah. If they had something similar to that, or some way of accessing the drivers in a non... Do they still have driver briefings? I believe so. I just don't think they're recorded. Oh. That's a shame. They should be. They really should be. Can you... Uh... They need driver briefings and driver debriefings. Yeah. <laughs> driver debriefings would be amazing to watch. Yeah. And I want to see more... Because people watch a series, I think now, if you've watched season... If you got into this, if you got into the sport from season one and you've been watching in real life as well as Drive to Survive uh, onwards, then I think people more want to see now the behind the scenes yeah. and more things that you see don't see There were see definitely some episodes where it felt like I was just watching a season review or like a race highlight. It was a YouTube race highlights video yeah. in Netflix. Yeah, because they, 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 they show a few on boards, they show a few overtakes. It doesn't show where anyone actually is. So I know, like, because uh, my mum, she's never it's been a bit into different before. Uh, and when I watched it with her for the first time, I'd sort of keep explaining to her where people are on the grid in different races and how... 
even though uh, some cars are shown as if they're near each other, it might be they're a lap behind or it might be that one of them hasn't pitted yet, mm -hmm. but they look as if they've dropped down 10 places because of bad driving or they've uh, gained yeah, 10 they, places. They, they of definitely frame it however they need to for the story. Yeah. Like, it's. If they even just showed at the side the standings, yeah. it would just feel a lot more accurate. And yeah, on to the next thing that I want to moan about today. <laughs> it's... Um, 10 minutes and 30 seconds of moaning wasn't enough. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> it was... wasn't enough. It was, for the sake of drama, um, I believe it was when Max won at Zandvoort this year. They showed celebrate. They showed. Max. Yeah. Zandvoort. Yeah. Wow. You They've won. not had an episode on that. Did they not? They have not had an episode on Zandvoort. It was. I forget which race it was then, where it was. They showed Verstappen winning. That's mad that they've not had an episode on Zandvoort. Yeah. They, they showed the crowd in Zandvoort, and then they showed Hamilton looking disappointed from a different race. And it's like there's. I'm sure he was disappointed. Yeah, just, 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 from, just from a different race. Um, but yeah, there's been a reoccurring theme with Drive to Survive is that they'll use radio messages from yeah. different races to show an event from a different race, and it just gets a bit cluttered and a bit confusing. They use, you know, the, do you remember the Yuki's fuck no radio message? Fuck no. Yeah, yeah. They use that four times over four different crashes. Did they? The same radio yeah. message. I, I've not. I've not. It used was so it. repetitive yeah. that like even the viewer must have caught on that this is the same he's yeah. not said the exact same phrase every time yeah they did it with Vettel last season as well I think it was either last season or the season before where um, it was either it, yeah I think it was I think it was Vettel when he crashed or something it might have been no Turkey got a podium that season yeah. um, I can't remember which race it was but it was a race where he spun and then they used a radio message from a completely different race just to yeah, but drama. Got a drama in it. Yeah. Drive to Survive Netflix. Please just give us more raw action. And, um, yeah. I've okay. not seen Ishan in quite a while, a couple few months. I don't know what mood he's in right now with Christian Horner's wife, Netflix's raw action, <laughs> slapping practice. See, see, this is the drama. I'm being framed badly here. <laughs> You've got the Netflix colour scheme going on. Oh, yeah, or an inverted Ferrari, maybe. I do, yeah. This is like, do you know the Alfa Romeo concept colours that everyone puts on the cars and they go with black and red to make it look a bit more... I love that. I put it on my story. I'm not sure. Yeah, For a couple of days there, my story was Alfa Romeo heavy. Yeah. I do really like Alfa Romeo. I want, a post I want that poster and I want the model car, but yeah. I was looking and it's... I can't afford that shit. It's, it's the same with planes. I was looking at some uh, aviation models in my room. About 80 quid for a plastic model. Yeah, but the AC, I spent 70 quid on that one that I built on the channel. Yeah. Link to that, if I remember. <laughs> um, that was worth it because it was a really fun time. Yeah. It. Yeah. Maybe we should do another one. I don't know how well it did for views. Go ahead and watch it. It did okay for views, I think. Good. And Alex gave us a shout out for that one. Because he enjoyed it, yeah. Cool. We maybe need to start cramming some stats in here. Maybe. Uh, so 13 minutes in, do we want to call it a day? Let's call it a day. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Um, let us know if you enjoyed Drive to Survive. Probably not. Um, but if you did, let us know. Let us know why you probably won't. But <laughs> thanks for watching. And I tell you what, though. Dev is watching right now still. There's one guy. His name's Dev. Yeah. Um, and he regularly asks me why we're not posting regularly. Jeez, Blame Dev. on you most of the time. You're a legend, um, Dev. Yeah, he's watching with his... I hope maybe his girl's watching as well. If you tell them to watch on separate devices, then we'll get more views. And subscribe on separate devices. That'd be really cool. You're a legend. <laughs> but yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, we'll see you next time. LTF1 official on Twitter, LTF1 official on Instagram. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all later. Goodbye. Do we have any?